recognizable building on the campus of the University of Notre Dame, but the basketball team in-house near unrecognizable from years past. But so far, 15th ranked Notre Dame is 2-0, as is the Tennessee Lady Vols beginning a new chapter in their program's history under one of their former players. You're watching the ACC on ESPN from an outstanding atmosphere at Purcell Pavilion here in South Bend. Adam Amin, Coach Andy Landers, Rebecca Lobo. We're going to talk a lot about a pomp and circumstance for this Tennessee team, but unfortunately, a torn ACL for their sophomore, Zay Green. Zay Green, their leading scorer this year, one of their primary ball handlers and one of their best perimeter defenders as well. She is out for the season, so they're going to rely a little bit more on Jordan Horston, one of the top freshmen in the country and could be the Lady Vols' best player this year. Terrific passer, gets other players involved, great athlete as well. Number two recruit out of high school. On the other side for Notre Dame, two trips to the national championship game, one national title, but that roster is gone. Muffet McGraw has to replace one of the most prolific lineups in college basketball history. Yeah, if you're Muffet McGraw, you've hit the reset button a couple of times in the last few days because they are gone. She's starting over tonight. She does something she hasn't done in her 33 years at Notre Dame. She starts three freshmen, talented freshmen, to go along with two transfers. So this is an entirely new basketball team. Her concern tonight, keeping the bigger Tennessee Lady Vols off of the boards, particularly the offensive boards, getting back defensively and not giving up any easy shots. This is that starting five that Andy was referring to. Brunel, a freshman, Peoples, a freshman, Gilbert, listed as a sophomore academically, but only played seven games last year. Sneezing and Destiny Walker, both transfers from Stanford and North Carolina, respectively. On the other side for the Tennessee Lady Vols, off to that 2-0 start, there is Jordan Horsted, number two player out of high school. Renaya Davis is their leading scorer from a season ago. She averaged 15 points per game. And then a lot of youth on both sides. And certainly first season for Kelly Harper, formerly Kelly Jolly, an outstanding career as a point guard for Pat Summit's national championship teams, now comes back home. The Sparta, Tennessee native is in her first season as Tennessee head coach with wins over East Tennessee State and Central Arkansas to start her tenure. Dee Kantner, Karen Priato, and Polani Spurlock are our three officials tonight. Tamari Key and Sam Brunel, a couple of freshmen for the tip. And Tamari Key goes right down the floor and gets an assist from the number two player out of high school, Jordan Horston. That's going to be an issue for Notre Dame tonight, just because they give up so much size at every position, but in particular in the post. This is the tallest Tennessee team in its program's history. Game time shot for Caitlin Gilbert. There is only one player on this Tennessee roster that is under six feet tall. That's a freshman guard from Australia, Jesse Rennie. Everybody else is over six feet. Off the front rim, no good for Davis. Massengill off target, rebounded by Lou Brown. So Artie, what have you seen? Because of the size advantage for Tennessee, Notre Dame playing a zone defense, a little bit more difficult to rebound out of that, that one possession, two offensive boards, two coach. Two offensive boards for Tennessee. The one thing that Muffet talked about yesterday in practice, they worked hard on it, didn't want to give up those offensive boards. Not only has Notre Dame had to replace that prolific lineup, but they've lost, for the time being, Abby Prohaska and Michaela Vaughn as well. So it's four guards and Sam Brunel playing in the middle, but she's got the ability to step out and knock down long-range shots. Oh, you, you just saw how talented this freshman is. She can stretch a defense. She can play off of the bounce. A back-to-the-basket player who would prefer to face up and play. Horston in the middle. Good look, but off target. And here comes Notre Dame with Anaya Peoples, the freshman from Illinois. Rebounded by Davis. One and done for Notre Dame. Good rotation for Brown. Sneezik flings it out to Destiny Walker. 
And battling for it was Lou Brown. Sam Brunel has given Notre Dame the lead, Tennessee ball. Sam Brunel is so good when she faces up to the basket, has range on the three-point shot, and we know over the course of the years, Notre Dame likes to run their offense through the elbow. She is a terrific passer from that area as well. Notre Dame in the zone. If the ball were to go to the block, they would double down. Horston just did what Notre Dame wants Tennessee to do, shoot the three. She ends up knocking that one down to tie the game. Coming off 17 points in a relatively easy win against Central Arkansas. Both teams went on the road and struggled in their openers, but both came away with wins. Tough shot for Walker, rebounded by Brown. Davis on the Tennessee push. Deterred that time by Peoples. But she is right there for a second chance. Tennessee going to look to run in transition every time. They've got the athletes to get out. Great finish by, the, by Renaya. Peoples behind the Brunel screen. Here comes Horston from Columbus, Ohio. The defense by the grad transfer from Stanford, Marta Sneezik. Pac-12 defensive honorable mention in her time with the Cardinal under Tara Vanderveer. She knows how to play defense. Lou Brown, another three. Offensive rebound, and it's flipped back up and in by Renaya Davis. Everything you talked about so far, Coach. Yeah, the, the two things that Muffet was concerned about, transition defense, Tennessee has hurt them there. Offensive rebounds, they're hurting them there. Irish made their first two shots. They've missed their last seven. Walker. To Brunel. Has to hurry. And a late foul call by Karen Preado. We'll go against Tennessee. It'll be against Jesse. Or I beg your pardon, it'll be against Tamari Keith. Look at McGraw coming in with a little bit more size. We imagine trying to get bigger body on the defensive glass. Quick shot by Brunel. Shot clock reset to 20 momentarily off the inbound. Then it went back to 30. So this is a new change this year. If you're just getting an opportunity to see your first college basketball game, shot clock on offensive rebound will reset to 20 instead of back to 30. So this will increase a little bit of the pace, increase the possessions. I love it. I think it's a great rule in the WNBA. Say, WNBA, they reset to 14, and it certainly has affected the game at that level to get more possessions. Would it stress you out as a coach trying to make that transition? <laughs> no, I, I think the question would be from the fans, why 20? Because you don't have to advance the ball up the entire court. The ball is in the half court. You reset to 20. You don't need the 10 seconds that it takes to advance the ball full court. Makes late game situations that much more interesting. Horston missed the three. Brunel battled for it. Walker came out with it. Here come the Irish. Tennessee has scored the last seven points. We're now playing out on the perimeter with Cosgrove in the game at six foot four. One thing that's noticeable with this year's Notre Dame team, when they get in the half court, it takes them a lot longer to get into their set and to run their offense with this young team than what we've seen the last few years with players who had so much more experience playing with one another. Gilbert knocks that one down late in the clock. Horston has a chance for three and knocks it down. Her second three of this opening quarter. She's a talented player. Man, she can score from the perimeter. She's an outstanding passer, willing to find her open teammates. You see the flow? It's different. Yeah. It's just different. I think a lot of fans are getting used to seeing this now, too. 
been a very experienced team the last few years. Traveling violation against Walker. And that'll take us to a timeout. Tennessee leading it by five. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Ancestry. You can give a gift that'll get the whole family talking. Notre Dame had to replace the most prolific team starting five in men's or women's history. All three of those players were on the WNBA All-Rookie Team. All five players that were picked were in the top 19 picks of the WNBA draft. So, Adam, you're saying they were pretty good. Decent. <laughs> Two trips to the national championship game, one national title in 2018. So a lot to replace for Muffet McGraw this year. From the corner, Renaya Davis has her third bucket of the game, and Tennessee's got its largest lead at eight. Renaya Davis has struggled offensively in the first couple of games of the season. Important for her and her confidence to come out on fire here. She's done that so far. She was two of eight against Central Arkansas, already three field goals. Brunel has it stripped. Lady Vols on the push. Davis maneuvering into sneezing and puts it home. It was 5-2 Notre Dame when Sam Brunel hit that three. It is a 15-2 run since. And what a great start for Tennessee to go on the, the home floor of Notre Dame. You've just lost your leading score to an ACL injury, and you come out with this kind of a start. Gilbert can't connect. Cosgrove, an offensive rebound. Had it blocked by Kush Kittawa. That's six foot four, the junior from Atlanta. Tallest Tennessee team has 18 blocks through its first two plus games. Push Kittawa off target. Sneezik muscling through. Excellent job by Sneezik with a lot of physicality on that play. Able to find the rim to finish. It's a big play for Notre Dame. You felt like the momentum was going to Tennessee, that Tennessee was having their way on both ends of the floor for her to be able to take it to the basket was a big move for them. And this is an important part of what Notre Dame has traditionally done and continues to do this season, and that is get to the free throw line. They've already taken 57 free throws on the season, averaging 26 and a half per game. Coach, contrast that with what Tennessee's been yeah. able to do this and year. And you look at the athleticism, the quickness, the one-on-one -on -one playing ability of the Tennessee perimeter players, and you wonder why they haven't challenged, got to the rim, and drawn some fouls. Totally different Notre Dame and Tennessee. Anaya Peoples just checked in for Marta Sneezik. Something Muffet McGraw mentioned to us today was Sneezik is probably the best leader, at least in terms of candidates they have, because she's a grad transfer. She's got to do it on and off the floor. Traveling violation against Horston, and it'll be Notre Dame basketball. Well, tomorrow night, the first game of the Phil Knight Invitational at the Moda Center in Portland. Number 15, Oregon, taking on Penny Hardaway's 14th-ranked Memphis squad. James Wiseman still eligible to play the number one recruit in the country, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific, on ESPN and the ESPN app. Oregon women made some noise this past week. An upset over the U.S. women's national team and an impressive showing by a talented group that is the favorite to win the national title this Oregon year. Oregon is so good and already playing like they're in midseason form. Nice take by Walker for two. There you see Destiny Walker, really skilled player. She can stretch you a step, two steps beyond the three. If you guard her tight, puts it on the floor, quickness to go by you, and then creative with the shot. Jaden McCoy at six foot three from Knoxville, Tennessee. The Juco transfer tried to rescue it, but it's another Tennessee turnover. This is a freshman, Anaya Peoples, trying to settle things down. A top 20 recruit. Gilbert pulls up and knocks it down. That looks like what Notre Dame is going to do. Play off the bounce in the mid-range. They've hit a three. They'd like to hit a couple of more, but they don't have anything in the low post area back to the basket. Davis, the rainbow three ends a 7-0 Notre Dame run, and Renaya Davis is on fire to start the night. She's got 12 of the 20 for the Lady Vols.
Brunel off the Cosgrove screen. All Lady Balls underneath the rim for the rebound. Davis gets it back, finds the open Ray Burrell. Notre Dame ball inside of a minute for the first. Sneezik will come back in for Notre Dame. And that'll give Gilbert a breather. For Tennessee, Jesse Rennie, the shortest player on the floor for the Lady Vols at 5'8", will give Renaya Davis a much-deserved breather. What a performance so far. She lives in her own land, Rennie. She's the only player on the Lady Vols who under six feet tall. Some of us can sympathize better than others. <laughs> Some of you can. <laughs> Music from Stanford, originally a Virginia native, out to Brunel. Good look, but couldn't knock it down. Good rebound by Burrell. Burrell muscling inside, unable to finish. Tipped around, grabbed by Kush Kittawa. Another offensive rebound for Tennessee. And a foul drawn by Kush Kittawa. She'll have a couple of shots coming. And credit Kush Kittawa because on that possession when Burrell was bringing the ball down the floor, she posted up hard and continued to post up, kept her defender on her back, didn't get the pass into her. So she gets the offensive rebound and continues to go hard. That's what you have to do as a post player. You have to continue to work even when you don't get the ball immediately. Cosgrove on that first Notre Dame foul as Kush Kittawa, the junior, puts it in. Another McDonald's All-American before her college days. <laughs> Offensive rebound, McCoy. Wave it out with a traveling violation. But Tennessee continues to crash the glass. That is now seven offensive rebounds, but only five second chance points. But not only does it give them the opportunity to score, but it doesn't allow Notre Dame to push in transition, yeah. which is a big part of what they do when they're playing well. Walker in the final seconds, floats it up. Rebounded by Massengill. That'll count if it goes. Off the glass. Back and forth with Tennessee, getting a big boost from Renaya Davis. Their leading returning scorer from a season ago. A 12-point outburst for the third-year starter, the second-team All-SEC selection. Rick, thanks so much. Oregon's got an interesting schedule this season as well. We're going to have a lot of fun tracking them. And these are two teams that have very intriguing stories. A new head coach, their former outstanding point guard Kelly Harper in her first year, trying to become the second head coach to bring four different teams to the NCAA tournament. Only Jim Foster has done that before in women's basketball history. It's saved by Walker, but right to Kishkidawa. And here come the Lady Balls up seven. Too hot from Horston. Back to Notre Dame. Sparta, Tennessee native. Played for late father Kenneth in high school. Then played 132 games for Pat Summit. Was one of the starters for three straight national title runs. Kelly Harper. Nizek passed on the three. Cosgrove in and out. Traveling violation on Davis. Sneezik came over to draw the charge, but Davis had walked before that. That's when your teammate has to not throw that outlet pass, because they're your eyes, because you're kind of looking back at them. Let it go. Find a different outlet person. I've been really impressed, Coach, with Tennessee's defense. Well, they've been getting out after it in their man-to-man. -man. We, we've talked about their, their offensive rebounding. We haven't talked, the ab talked about the absence of offensive rebounding by Notre Dame. Notre Dame 
keeps floating their post players out on the perimeter. They have no offensive rebounds in this basketball game. Push Kittawa, try to muscle it to Key. And a couple of shots coming. Foul will be on Sam Brunel, her first. To your point about Tennessee's defense, they're sliding in under screens. They're keeping people in front of them. They force Notre Dame to pull up the one dribble shots. They don't have to defend anything on the block. It's pretty clear to them how they need to defend, want to defend Notre Dame. And so consequently, there's no wrinkles. You know, everything's screen and roll on the perimeter or screen and fade. They're sliding under all those screens, keeping the offensive people in front of them. Then when shot goes up, go rebound. Brunel gets loose for another three. After she made that first one, she's missed her last few attempts. Horston banging into Sneezek, offensive foul. How about Sneezek? Two possessions in a row, just putting her body on the line. And this is a player who is coming down full speed, steps right in. Yeah, I'll take that charge. I Check mean, it I, out. That hurts. <laughs> and two in a row. Rebecca said that's hurt like she's done that before. I, I haven't, but I, I know it hurts. <laughs> I, you could imagine. I it's, can. It's two fouls now on Horston as well. Look at the Tennessee defenders. Look at the Notre Dame offensive players. Five facing the basket out right. on the perimeter. Five orange shirts and under. We'll be sneezing going to the line. The foul on Renaya Davis, her first. Marta Sneezik, just five feet eight inches tall. Outstanding soccer player in high school. And put together a really solid run at Stanford. Not only defensively, but as a very good distributor of the basketball. Strong player on both ends of the floor. The kind of point guard a lot of coaches like. She's going to keep your basketball team under control. She's going to get you into the sets you want to be in offensively. Going to play hard for defense. She's the kind of point guard all the teammates like. The non-shooting kind who just <laughs> wants to find you and pass you the ball. Davis. Got her own miss. Another offensive rebound, and she'll have a chance at the line. McDonald's All-American out of high school. Florida Player of the Year. Renaya Davis racking up honors in her Tennessee career. Yeah. Last foul went on Costa, so now she's got two. Because Kittawa will step out of the game. And Lou Brown is back in. Transfer from Washington State. And you're seeing Tennessee do something with these substitutes that very few teams in the country can do. Just take a big out, run another big in their place. Yep. They, they don't lose anything size-wise or skill-wise with those substitutions. Well, that's what Kelly Harper does, right? She likes to play a lot of people. Ideally, she likes to have 10 in her rotation so they can continue to get after you on the defensive end of the floor. But you're right, Coach. <laughs> bring size out, bring yep. more size yep. in. We saw that at Missouri State. A lot of players rotated in. That really seemed to wear down some of those NCAA tournament teams that they knocked out in those first couple of rounds before losing to Stanford. Mass and Gill back the other way. Brown covered up. Good defensive possession for Notre Dame. Good patience by Tennessee. Massengill finds a big down low in Tamari Key for her second bucket. You know, that play was all Massengill because Key had stopped posting down on the block. When Massengill penetrated, the post player picked her up, left Key open. She was posting hard early, though, and they didn't find her. Foul against Notre Dame. Let's go back the other way. Foul on Gilbert. Talked about how to defensively Tennessee's been able to get after it well Walker might be able to get that shot off against a lot of teams but not the length of Tennessee and there's the play you're talking about coach nice little pass inside little to the penetrate big and lay off 
you know, block shots. We talked about the size of Tennessee. Tennessee averages 8.5 blocks per game in their first two games. 19 total in not even two and a half games yet. You don't see it very often, but Notre Dame worked really hard yesterday at not taking the ball inside. This time, Anaya Peoples stepped in to take the charge from Anaya Davis. That's the second foul on Davis, who's Tennessee's leading scorer so far. We talked at the top of the show how Notre Dame is missing 98% of its scoring from a year ago. This is a Notre Dame team that last year led the nation in scoring, and right now, midway through the second quarter, they are being held to 16 points. Brunel trying to break out of her drought. Flipped out of bounds, last touch by Massengill. Stays with the Irish. And again, notice the shot clock, it resets back to 20. So this is entering the season. That's the percentage of what you lost. And then take out Abby Prohaska, who's dealing with blood clots right now in each of her lungs, and Michaela Vaughn, who had an ACL sprain in the opener against Fordham. So those percentages have gone up since the start of the season. Brunel finally knocking down that jumper. Davis, that rainbow three from the corner. Walker leaked out, Sneezek found her. And that's, they needed that. That's what happens when you get a defensive board, right? You get a defensive board, then you can pass it ahead and run out. Second violation. That goes against Tamari Key. Ninth Tennessee turnover. Lead has been as large as 10 a couple of times in this first half for Tennessee. Brunel off target on the three. Nice pass by Massengill to Davis, threading the needle, and Davis finishes. Sometimes a quick shot early in your offense is kind of like a turnover in that regard, and that the other team can go quickly the other way. Walker knocks it down behind the Brunel screen. He's got seven. Walker got a good screen from Burnell, but she also did a nice job of reading the defender when she went under the screen, stopped on top of the screen where she was wide open, and dropped that three. Massengill got right past Destiny Walker on that drive. And had the clear lane because of the way Tamara Key was posting up. You said it post up hard. It does other good things for the rest of the yes, offense. Yes, it does. That should almost be like an assist for the big. Coach Land is like, looking at me with a side eye. Just trying to remember oh, the Rebecca Coles Lobo's Coles career Coles assist Coles. numbers, <laughs> how much they get elevated with some of those screen assists. Brunel, another three missed. She gets back on defense. And has to guard Tamari Key and <laughs> immediately committed a foul. That'll be the second on Sam Brunel as we hit the under five timeout. Seven point lead for the Lady Balls. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. We all have to persevere in our own ways, John Berkeley. Rebecca, do you remember him working? <laughs> <laughs> Tennessee crashing the offensive glass again. Walker tried to steal it. It will stay at this end of the floor with the Lady Walls.
Caitlin Cole is in for Notre Dame for the first time. She's helping to play defense. Burrell trying to split the double team and lost it. Cole comes out with it. Tennessee having some issues turning the ball over in this first half. Gilbert blocked by Burrell. That's the third Tennessee block. Davis has more than half of Tennessee's points. She's got 18 now in the first half. Block on one end and a bucket on the other. Tennessee back up by nine. Walker behind the Cosgrove screen. Destiny Walker, Muffin McGraw said, if we have a go-to player, she's one of the top two candidates for that. She's a good one because of her versatility with the basketball. She can beat you off the bounce. She reads screens well, and she has excellent range with her three. Camera Harris finding Renaya Davis. Outlet to Walker. Leaves it for Gilbert. Nice pass. Sneezik all over Burrell. Good recovery by Burrell, but unable to finish it. Notre Dame trailed by as many as 10. They're down by four with the ball. Kush Kittawa will check in and take Tamari Key out. Massengill, Harris, Davis, Kush Kittawa, and Burrell, the five out there for Tennessee. Sneezik, Gilbert, Walker, Cosgrove, and Cole for Notre Dame. Walker. Harris. Around and down. Able to put it home. Six point game. Gilbert working hard for the space. Good box out by Kush Kittawa. Nice little no-look feed by Massengill, and Harris will head to the free throw line of the foul. Well, a new season of 30 for 30 podcasts is here. If you haven't checked out the series, it's amazing. And think about this story. Diana Taurasi and Sue Bird and the relationship they had with the Russian team owner for the team they played in Europe for a man they grew to love with a mysterious past. There were stories about him being a KGB agent and involved in organized crime. It's an awesome series. Check it out, 30 for 30 podcast. Now available everywhere. Caitlin Cole on the foul for Notre Dame. Credit this young Tennessee team. As Notre Dame made a run, got the crowd back into it, they have responded. And they've done a great job continuing to push the pace. Zay Green. That was one of the things that she really excelled at was her energy and her ability to push them in transition. And without her, they have still been able to get the flow that they've wanted on the offensive end. It's a much younger Tennessee team now. They have six players on their roster who had never played for the program until this year. More than half the roster is underclassmen. Got a little younger with that Zay Green injury, although she is an underclassman as well, but was experienced. Cosgrove, no good. Rebound, Harris. Into a double team that time. Massengill forced it. Walker back the other way. Massengill's there with the defense. Another Tennessee block. I'll tell you what, though, Walker's relentless in transition. Yeah. Every single time Notre Dame gets possession of the ball, she is running out. How many blocks uh, by Tennessee hey, so that, far? That was a good take. It was just a better block <laughs> yes. than you. Yes. Cutting to the rim, Peoples in traffic. 70 ticks for the first half, eight point Tennessee lead. A foul against the Lady Balls. That'll be on Kushkidawa on the screen. Her first. 
I'll tell you what, though, Coach, like, the way Notre Dame plays offensively, it takes time and repetition to get to the point where you're smooth. They've been plotting at times here. Sure. But this is a young team in their third game of the season. They are going to look very different offensively as the season goes on, in particular come NCAA tournament time. Yeah, uh, to your point, I think you're exactly right. It's going to take a little bit more time. Here are five players that started this game that have never played together. This is the third game of the year. There's going to be some hiccups. There's going to be some uncertainties. Cosgrove in and out of the three. Smart decision. Yeah, you can hold for the final shot. Essentially, about a three-second difference. Unless you turn the ball over. It was out of bounds to Notre Dame. Excellent defense on the sideline. Hassling by Caitlin Gilbert. So now Notre Dame can hold for the final shot. Just three of 13 are the Irish from three-point range. Sneezik saw the lead open and missed the layup. Final seconds. Bassengill will count if it goes. Largest lead was 10 for Tennessee. They lead by eight at the halftime break. Notre Dame shot under 30%. Excellent defensive performance for stretches for this young Tennessee squad. We'll get you to the studio for John Brickley and Carolyn Peck. They've got the E-Trade halftime report. My friends, it's all yours. Tennessee's largest lead was 10 in the opening half of play. They have an eight-point advantage as we get set for the start of the second half here in South Bend. A couple of key nuggets to chew on as we get set for the third quarter. Offensive rebounding, as Coach and Rebecca talked about, a major factor. Notre Dame, this young group, doing a good job of protecting the basketball. Adam Amin, Andy Landers, Rebecca Lobo back courtside. So let's start at that top line. Renaya Davis with a very impressive 18-point performance. How good was she? She was 7 of 12 from the floor. She rebounded the ball, six rebounds. Shot it very well from the floor. Here you see her on the tape. Sometimes when you're bad, you're good. If you go rebound your own miss and put it back in. And then other times, just be in the right spot at the right time. But she can stretch you with the three. She can beat you off the bounce. She has been terrific. Tennessee's best player came to play. And this is a Notre Dame team that only shot. They shot under 29% in that first half. They have to find a way to get stops and get out in transition because they struggled in the half court. Unlike last year's team, this is a Notre Dame team who is not prolific from three. Adam, on the season, they are six of 35 from the three-point line. Went three of 13 in that first half. Out of contact, Brunel was trying to draw a foul on Key. Knocked out of bounds by Peoples. So the same 10 that began the game start the second half for these two teams. And Renaya Davis picks up right where she left off. She's got the first 20 point game for a Tennessee Lady Ball this year. And she gives Tennessee its largest lead at 11. See the inexperience, the youth, the uncertainty, the offense. The offense slowed down there for a second. And when that happens, all it does is it gives the defensive team a chance to reconnect, get everything the way they want it so that they can defend better. The last few seconds of that possession, you heard Marta Sneezik on the yeah, left side. Screaming. The, the graduate student, go, 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 because the offense was stagnant. The Peoples ends up driving to draw the Lou Brown foul. Anaya Peoples, she and Caitlin Gilbert on the floor together. They've known each other for a long time since Gilbert was seven and Peoples was six. They played every summer together. So you're hoping some of that chemistry will carry over in these early games and maybe build as the season goes on. Unable to connect on either free throw. Nice pass by Davis to Key. Brunel cleared it, but it's knocked away by the 6-3 Brown. Davis for three, knocks it down. And Knoxville, they say she's feeling it. Knoxville's loving Renaya Davis right now. Back to back threes to start the third quarter. Tennessee leads by 14, 24 for Renaya Davis. You know, she came to play. They've left her open. She's knocked it down. 
Big Orange Country's happy. Welcome back to South Bend, where it is Notre Dame 28, Renaya Davis 24. The junior has been <laughs> on fire for the Lady Vols, leading them in scoring right now. Got getting her swagger on. A career high 33 came against Arkansas last year. Caitlin Gilbert able to bank one home for Notre Dame to stop a 10-0 spurt. And Tamari Key beats everybody down the floor to put Tennessee back up by 14. Gilbert, the first Irish player into double figure, or second Irish player, beg your pardon, into double figures. Walker and Gilbert each with 10. Sneezik sets it up for Cosgrove. Last touch by Tennessee. Good defense. Okay, Rebecca, I got you a good bigs question, okay? You got me a good bigs question? Very good, exciting. Good, a good bigs question. If, if Notre Dame's bigs aren't on the offensive boards and they're not back on defense in transition, where are they? <laughs> Well, that's, that's the question, right? It, with one of your priorities is getting back in defensive transition. You're not going to be crashing the offensive glass. But then you have to be able to stop the, the transition the other way. Get out on shooters on the perimeter. Right now, Notre Dame's just struggling. But everything is harder when you can't get any offensive flow. Oh, ab absolutely. And then the other thing, at times, you will see them run back. They actually get back in time. And, but they don't get engaged. They don't get checked up. There's a lapse between getting back and starting to play on the defensive end. Tennessee with three three-pointers in this third quarter. Two from Davis and one from Horston. Gilbert's got the only two for the Irish so far in quarter three. Gilbert cross court to Brunel. Costco over the weak side rebound. Shot clock resets to 20. Baseline, Gilbert. Shot a dozen. Masson Gilda Davis. Five threes from Renaya Davis. Three here in the third quarter. A 27 point outburst from the junior from Jacksonville. <laughs> Sneezing. Rejected by Key. Run down by Davis. Horston for Key, Massengill, Davis. Off target. Felt like everything's going down for her tonight. It's almost a surprise it didn't go in. Brunel, a little up and under, and she draws the contact from Lou Brown. Second foul from Brown. By the way, five Tennessee blocks in this game. I mean, they've got size and length. Key averaging four block shots a game coming into this one. I tell you what, we talked a little bit earlier about Kelly Harper and the way she subs and gets fresh bodies in and out. Tennessee runs hard. Yeah. Every time they corral the defensive board, they're pushing. They look fresh. They look like a team that has a deep bench. They've got 11 players active on the roster. Remember, if you're just joining us, Zay Green tore her ACL. She's done for the year. So of the 11 active players on the roster, 10 of them have played in this game already. They just look fresh. They, they do. They're ready to run. Try to go backdoor that time. It's a kickball call against the Irish. So the shot clock was above 20. So there is no reset back to 20. It stays above 20 on those quick whistles.
We were here a couple of years ago when Tennessee came into South Bend, had a big lead in the second half. Notre Dame did come back and win that game. Much different lineup, obviously, as Kush Kittawa is able to finish. But with that shot clock being reset to 20, again, end of game scenarios, more possessions in a game, so comebacks might be a little bit easier. It'll be interesting to see how it plays out this year, what coaches think about it as Brunel puts it in. You see the 23-point comeback two years ago, the largest in Notre Dame history. Notre Dame was number one last year when they went into Knoxville and won. In and out for Davis. Battling with Peoples, Davis runs it down, finds Brown, unable to hit the three. Brunel with a good box out for the board. Here comes Notre Dame down 16. Nice catch with the left by Walker, and Massengill commits the foul. For first of the night. Ray Burrell will come in. And she'll take Jordan Horston out. Haley Jones of Stanford, the only player that's rated higher coming out of that 2019 recruiting class. Tara Vanderveer with one of her best recruiting classes in some time. Outstanding group of freshmen. Stanford's good this year. Yeah, you got a chance to see him against the U.S. national team. I did, yeah, and, and they look good. They're, they're running the same system. They they play good team basketball. Keanu Williams played great against the USA national team. Nice play by, speaking of Stanford, Sneezik, the former Cardinal, knocked it out of bounds. You know, the entire Pac-12. I yeah. mean, that, that, that conference is the most improved conference yeah. in the last six, seven years of any in the country. I think it's the strongest conference in the country. Three teams in the top ten, I think, are all legitimate. Oregon, Stanford, Oregon State. Two more in the top 20 in Arizona State and UCLA. Davis for Harris. And an assist for Renaya Davis. Back up by 17. Sneezik misses the three, and here comes Davis. Stolen away by Walker. Sneezik shoveling it inside for Peoples and unable to do anything with it. The Tennessee defense coming up again. Massengill draws the foul. Tennessee, impressive stuff so far coming to South Bend. It is my pleasure to introduce our Lady Ball basketball coach. Welcome home, Kelly Harper. I want to thank Coach Fulmer, and um, I want to thank him for this opportunity to be here and to be your coach. I do understand the gravity of this position. I am so, so excited to be home. It's indescribable and extremely special. I'm ready to get to work. Thank you, guys. Clearly emotional. And understandably so, as she returns home after an outstanding stint, especially to close at Missouri State, six years there. Got to the Sweet 16 last year, did a great job in North Carolina State, Western Carolina, and could be the second ever head coach to take four teams to the NCAA tournament. Got to be her dream job. You know, she played at Tennessee, won national championships at Tennessee. She, she grew up about 60 miles away in Sparta, Tennessee. Uh, I recruited Kelly, really good person. She wants to do this the right way. She emphasized when she talked to us today, wanting to do it the right way with the right kind of people. Cosgrove knocks down a three, cuts it to 14. See the note, 110 and three in their last 113 home games. The only three losses came in December of 2014, 2016, and 2018 when UConn came in for the yearly matchup. The even numbered years have been played in South Bend. Another three for Walker. Notre Dame after a cold shooting stretch in the first half, trying to get hot here in the third.
Walker's got 14. Back to Kushkinawa. Three defenders surrounding her, and she'll draw the foul. I like what Tennessee's done on the offensive end of the floor with Renaya Davis out of the game. The last two times they've come down and pounded it inside. They've gotten results both times. They have the advantage there, and you you wonder, I wonder when I watch Notre Dame transition the last four or five times if their bigs have started to tire a little bit. You all talked about uh, the rotation, the substitutions that, that Kelly has made for Tennessee. Notre Dame's bench isn't that deep. They're going to go six, seven, eight people in most games this year. I'm seeing some fatigue with the Notre Dame bigs. And for post players, the fatigue doesn't just come from running up and down the floor. Most of the fatigue comes from battling players oh, yeah. who are bigger and stronger than you in the post. And, Brunel, and they've had to do that tonight. Exactly. And Brunel, as you guys were just talking about, trying to reach in and maybe a little bit tired, she picked up her third foul. Gilbert. Unable to get it over Kush Kittawa. Another Tennessee block. Walker hit the deck. Going back the other way. Gilbert knocked it away. Intended for Cassie. Peoples racing in. Another block. This time Massengill. Notre Dame all season long has been so good at getting to the free throw line by attacking the paint. Well, it's been a different story here today because of that. The size and length of the Lady Balls. Nine Tennessee blocks. They have 26 in almost three games to start the year. Tallest team in Tennessee history. Eric Trainer, the SID, did a great job of digging for that note. A foul here against Gilbert. That's the second time she's gotten called for a screen as a foul. You see the tallest team in program history, six foot two. Jesse Rennie, the only player under six feet on this roster. Burrell steps in and a reach by Marta Sneezik that time. First foul on Marta. This has been a real good energy and focus and consistent effort by Tennessee throughout this game on both ends of the floor. They haven't gotten leads and, you know, let the momentum slip away. They've answered when Notre Dame has made many runs. Kelly Harper has to be excited about what she's seeing. It'll be fun to gauge this team because they're going to get some early tests in December, especially. They play Texas every year. They'll do it for a 38th straight year this year. They get Stanford going on the road to Palo Alto this year. And then we get a chance to see them again in January. They go to stores. The rivalry is going to be renewed between Tennessee and UConn. Excited to see that. So a lot of good tests for Kelly Harper's team in and around SEC play. And this is the first big one. You know, we asked her before the game, what have you learned about your team? And she said, I'll answer that, and I'll be able to answer that question after this game. Yeah. Especially in this environment, she quieted the, oh. they quieted the crowd from the jump. And having watched them here tonight, it's obvious that they have what they need on the front line. They're very good with their forward and post type players. They're excellent on the wings with Davis and Horston. I think the question becomes, can they get consistent play at the point here you see Horston has moved to the point and is running it now she's not naturally a point guard there's your turnover right Walker will go to the line for two uh, the Burrell foul a lot of freshmen and a lot of freshman mistakes in this game both teams you saw Horston being casual throwing the ball back to the middle just now ended up a foul layup on the other end you've seen it with the Notre Dame players taking ill advised shots and for some of these kids this is the most they've played since the eighth grade picnic I mean they're, <laughs> they're just happy to be out here I never got picked to play in the eighth grade picnic this is terrible I just love working alongside a southerner who can say there's you a turnover <laughs> <laughs> like syrup going down on the pancakes it sounds just good coming on Andy Lane. <laughs> 13 point game destiny walker leading the way for the irish she's got 16. notre dame extending their defense yep. trying to get something going 
two minutes to play. Timeout, 58-45, Tennessee on top. Top 15 matchup in the first game of the Phil Knight Invitational at the Moda Center in Portland. 15th ranked Oregon taking on 14th ranked Memphis. You'll get to see the number one high school recruit, James Wiseman. That's on Tuesday night on ESPN and the ESPN app. There's Memphis out of the American Conference. UConn in its final season on the women's side in the American Conference before going back to rejoin the Big East. One of the major storylines in college basketball for this season. Haven't lost a game in conference play. I heard Brick and Peck talking about it a little bit during the halftime break in studio as well. Both of these teams will see UConn later this year. Notre Dame gets them on December the 8th up in stores. Both of these teams will be up in Connecticut to take on the Huskies. Talking during this game, you know, who is Tennessee going to be? Who is Notre Dame going to be this season? Connecticut, another one of those teams after losing Katie Lee Samuelson and Nafisa Collier to the WNBA. Yep. What exactly are they going to look like as the season goes on? A lot of folks said it'll be uh, Crystal Dangerfield and Megan Walker, and we'll see what happens around them. There is Walker. That is rejected by Key, but a foul is called. One of the connecting storylines as well is Avina Westbrook, transferred from Tennessee to Connecticut, did not have her waiver approved, so she will not be eligible this season as it stands now. Rebecca, you talked about team free throws for both of these clubs earlier. I mean, Tennessee has done a much better job today getting to the free throw line than they had early in the season. And Notre Dame got there a little bit, but not the 26 plus times that they've been averaging up to this point. They got thing. blocked a lot of times trying to get there. It's one there. thing if you're Tennessee to get there, it's another thing to hit them. They shot a much better percentage today. Mass and Gill back in. Burrell is out. Horston, Davis, Brown, Key, and Massengill for Tennessee. And Notre Dame extending the defense. Key posted. Davis came in and kept the ball alive. <laughs> Kelly Harper had to shuffle out of the way of that one. It goes back the other way to Notre Dame. And ran right into Zay Green, though, who's over there with a yeah. the big brace on her knee. You gotta be careful. I mean, I don't know how much more you can do to it, but. Set her at the end of the bench and put a manager beside her. Yeah. Another moving screen, this time against Cosgrove. That's her third foul. Young players yep. trying to figure out the speed of this game. You know, there's an adjustment there. Everything's happening a little bit quicker. You saw an illegal screen a minute ago, another illegal screen. Just not getting there, getting it set. And then the player with the ball, sometimes moving early and creating the opportunity for that illegal screen. Tough shot by Horston. Peoples back the other way. Beats Cosgrove and the backside block from Davis. It's 10 of them tonight for Tennessee. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, yesterday at practice, they worked on not getting the ball inside. And now you see why. <laughs> we knew the size was a factor to say the least. The jump ball here. Possession arrow gives it back to the Irish. Shot clock off, 16 seconds left in the third. Looking for a bucket. Try to stay within striking distance, going to the fourth. Peoples, banked it, no good. Massengill missed the first two buzzer beaters in the first and second quarter. She let that one go. 
Her club is up 13 through three. It's South Bend to the fourth. We go. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And this is a Tennessee team that has been dominant at times defensively, in particular with their ability to block shots. Ten so far in this game. They are big and long. This is a Tennessee team that can set a standard this year. I mean, they can just deflect anything that's in the paint. Average eight and a half blocks a game. They have ten going into the fourth Ooh. quarter. 27 in the first three games this year. Nice feed. He missed it off the Horston pass. What a pass. you got to finish that and give your guard the assist. As she tapped her chest, too. Horston was a little frustrated. <laughs> you saw her react after the missed layup attempt. Another good feed. This time, he finishes. But right back to her. Horston can pass. Yeah. She's got a real knack for finding and locating. Gilbert on the weak side of that zone got caught watching the basketball flash right in front of and gave up that layup. Well, Walker tried to throw it out right into the hands of Horston. Tennessee works that lead right back up to 17. Clock down to six for Sneezik. Brunel scooping it against Keane. Good play from Sam Brunel, top six player out of high school in the ESPNW rankings. Another Tennessee turnover, but Horston rescues the ball. Horston takes the three this time. Rebounded by Gilbert. Gilbert only seven games played last year before the shoulder injury against Iowa ended her season. Back in the rotation as a key player this year. Another Tennessee turnover. Walker transition. And sloppy on both ends now. The defensive play by Peoples. Uh, and that's turned over back to Tennessee. Last few possessions have been sloppy and a bit ugly. Well, let's go a few possessions <laughs> before that where it was looking really good. What a great no look pass inside, rewarding your post player, then getting an easy two. Just a careless turnover by Notre Dame. Horston going quickly the other way. Thirty two turnovers between the two clubs tonight. Three second violation against Tennessee. Yeah, Tennessee's going to a little seal game. A little seal game down on the blocks. Post players working to seal out, seal in. Depending on which side the ball is on, they would seal out. If their ball's on their side of the floor, they're sealing in. They got caught in the lane three seconds, stayed too long. Seal, 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 seal. You got it, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Brunel off the setup from Gilbert. How about that job by People? She's five foot ten amongst the trees. Offensive rebound to muscle it back in. First points of the night for People. A really solid Notre Dame crowd tonight, considering the weather situation here in the Midwest. Showed up, making some noise, trying to will their team back in it. Backside rebound, Harris. Peoples was trying to take it away from Horston. It's stolen away by Sneezing. Brunel. That's a two. You knew it was coming. 
I think she's one of eight from three before that shot. But there's nothing not to like about her facing up and shooting the ball from three-point range. Beautiful form, nice stroke, just been a little cold tonight. Traveling violation. Notre Dame, a young team, and they're making a push because of their freshmen. First on the offensive glass, Peoples gets in there among the trees and finishes. And then Sam Brunel facing up. Coach, that's what she likes to do right there. That's it. She's been cold, but you knew sooner or later. Wouldn't surprise you if you come down the next time, puts up another one. Great confidence. She's continued to shoot the basketball. A couple of freshmen trying to bring Notre Dame back into it. Anaya Peoples, number 18 in our ESPNW rankings. Sam Brunel, number six. They've got 15 points combined tonight. What's well, been an 18 point lead at one point for Tennessee is down to 11 with six to play. Here's Brunel. Been struggling from three point range since making her first one tonight. So the last time in South Bend, these two teams met Notre Dame had that great comeback with a much different looking lineup. Now one last touch by the Irish. I wondered coming out of this timeout if Tennessee would try to go to Davis. She's been quiet lately. The last 10 minutes, 35 seconds, no points. She's got 27 for the game to go along with 10 rebounds. Speaking of Davis, he trapped her on the baseline. Burrell's got to hoist it up with the shot clock winding down. One of the better defensive possessions of the night for the Irish. Yeah, absolutely. You, you know, we've watched Tennessee all night go up and down the floor with speed in transition and get quick shots. When they've had to work in the half court, they haven't been as effective scoring the basketball. UConn, the only team to come into Purcell Pavilion over the last three years and win a game. Five years, beg your pardon. Another block. Key gets that one. It's the 11th for Tennessee. But Key running the floor, trying to flip it to Massimo. That's a tough spot to put your big into, right? Yeah, you don't give your, your big the ball there. But I'll tell you what, you know, Notre Dame did a really good job getting the basketball exactly where they wanted against Tennessee's zone, and Key was just able to close out with her size. That's where you want to get the basketball. We've got two players on the roster at six foot five, Key, and then Emily Saunders, a freshman, who's the only player who hasn't played tonight for Tennessee. Brunel from the baseline. Cole trying to get in the passing lane. Knocked it off of Horston and out of bounds. The senior from Toledo. Former walk-on awarded a scholarship this year. She'll come off the floor, and here's Destiny Walker. 18 points to lead the Irish tonight. 420 to play here in South Bend. Early season test for both of these young groups. Sneezik into traffic. Nine on the shot clock. Another blocked shot. Brunel. Short. One for ten from three-point range. Good play by Gilbert. Back to Gilbert from Peoples. A couple of chances for the Irish. They've gotten some good looks. They just haven't been able to get the ball in the basket. Still shooting under 30% Notre Dame. Davis, the runner, and her first point since early in the third quarter. 
29 for Tennessee. And their leading score, Renaya Davis, tonight. Their lead back up to 13. Peoples for three. They needed it. And just like that, it's a 10 point game, but still 3 10 to play. Reach and foul on Walker. Both Jordan Horst and Renaya Davis were yelling at Tamari Key because she was supposed to much earlier step, set, step up and set an on ball screen. Stomping their foot, yelling at her, get up there, big girl. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sometimes freshmen forget. Yeah, Davis was in the corner, just stomping and yelling, trying to get her group organized. Guards don't like it when they're supposed to get an on ball screen and you forget to go. No, but you're impressed with Tennessee's discipline here. Yes. Uh, late in the game, Notre Dame's made a little run. They haven't come down, done anything too quick. They've been under control until that. <laughs> Forced it a little wild. Peoples back the other way, trying to make it a single-digit game. Got fouled by Massengill. But Coach Lander speaking to that, in Tennessee's first game of the season, they made some very poor decisions late in the game. They took shots they early in the yes. clock. They fouled when they had the lead. They did things that were not winning plays. They still came away with the victory. These last few possessions, they've had patience. They've taken time off the clock. Definitely have learned since yes. that first game a week ago. People splits it. Brunel the rebound, but tried to force the pass. Horston stole it. And Massengill's going to settle it down for Tennessee with 2.20 to go. There's Davis. Harris kept it alive. That's that, a backbreaker. Yeah. You play defense the entire possession and then give up the offensive board. And a foul called against Destiny Walker. Fifty-three to twenty-seven. The rebounding edge tonight for the much taller team. Foul here against Peoples. Minute 47 left. Tennessee not in the bonus just yet. Tennessee on the season, only 53% from the free throw line. So Coach Muffin McGraw trying to get them into the bonus. Play the foul game. 10 of 19 in the first two games. They're 10 of 16 tonight, a little bit better. There's a foul, I believe, on Walker. Nope, they'll give it to Peoples. Walker made some contact, but Peoples gets called for that one. So that's the fourth team foul. Last foul to give for Notre Dame. And there's the foul by Walker to send Horston to the free throw line. Only down by nine, hoping that Tennessee's gonna miss some here. Three on Walker. Jordan Horston, MVP of the McDonald's All-American game last spring. Part of back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back top 10 recruiting classes for Tennessee going back to the, the final few years of Holly Warlick's tenure. There's a miss, but another offensive rebound for Harris. You can use the word again, Lobo, backbreaker. I mean, there's really no excuse for it. It's such an overlooked part of the game, too, is boxing out on the free throw. Yep. 15 offensive rebounds tonight now for Tennessee. Got 
Guys, the last time Notre Dame shot under 35% from the floor in a game was the 2015 National Championship game against UConn. They shot 33% from the floor in that game. They're right at 30% tonight. Impressive defensive performance from Tennessee, and let's also take into consideration the lineup out there for Notre Dame. Runella fading three and a whistle. Quick reminder that when Seahawks and 49ers are done over on ESPN, we'll have full post-game reaction with Scott Van Pelt, 11.15 Eastern tonight. Booker McFarland, Ryan Clark will break down Russell Wilson and Jimmy Garoppolo. We'll talk about Kawhi Leonard facing the team he won the title with a year ago in the Toronto Raptors. It's coming up with SVP on SportsCenter tonight over on ESPN. Peoples muscling inside. Back down to a 10-point game. Okay, if you're gonna play the foul game, you gotta do it right away. Yeah, you can't burn another eight seconds, six seconds off the clock. That's twice that Notre Dame's done that. They did it the last time. It was a 20-second shot clock. They fouled at the 10-second mark. They do it again here. They're losing valuable time by not fouling earlier. Sneeze had just committed her fifth. So she's done for the night. Caitlin Cole will come back in. You know, I'm impressed with the freshman on the floor. Horston, obviously a gifted athlete, can score at every level. Uh, terrific on the defensive end, but also the Notre Dame freshman, Brunel. Uh, don't forget tonight. She's going to learn a lot about tonight. She's rushed some shots. She hasn't stayed true to her form here in the second half. Maybe a little bit of fatigue. You're going to see her hit the shots that she's missed tonight throughout her career here at Notre Dame. She's getting the shots they want her to have. Foul this time on Horston. And again, you get that sense from a lot of teams, right? We see these teams early in the season. You see freshmen or sophomores sure. that are now stepping into a, another role. You get to December, maybe January. It's gonna. Most of these teams are gonna look a lot different. You would think if they don't have experience. Absolutely, it's it's going to change. You learn a lot. Both these coaches talked before the game. They were gonna learn a lot yep. about their basketball team tonight, and I'm sure both coaches have. At some point, Muffet McGraw will get Michaela Vaughn back. She'll help shore up their yep. front line. We hope that Abby Prohaska can return. She was diagnosed with blood clots in each of her lungs, so out for an indefinite amount of time. And she was the only returning player yeah. who got you know, significant time a season ago. Yeah, any experience they had, any experience they had coming into the season, that's on the shelf for the time being. Foul on Cole here. Tennessee will shoot a couple more free throws. Notre Dame will be right back at it this week. They'll get another opportunity against a team they beat in the NCAA tournament last year. Michigan State comes into town. They'll play Toledo. They'll go on the road to Ann Arbor to take on the Wolverines. They'll get that South Florida team that had the great win against Texas. Notre Dame will see USF down in Cancun. They get Lindsey Whalen's Minnesota Gophers during the Big Ten ACC Challenge. They'll get UConn in December. The record may not be very pretty for Notre Dame coming out of December. That doesn't mean there won't be a lot of positive experiences for Muffet McGraw. 71 to 60, 56 seconds left, and Renaya Davis has been the star of the show. 30 points, 10 rebounds tonight for the junior from Jacksonville. You know, the best player maybe in the Southeastern Conference, certainly the best athlete on the floor tonight. She's been deadly from three. She can beat you off the bounce. She goes to the offensive boards, scores in a variety of, way, uh, of ways, and it's just a difficult matchup for anyone to defend. So Renaya's mom, Sharetta, didn't want Renaya to play basketball because she didn't want Renaya playing in the post. She said, they're going to hurt my baby. I don't want her to play in there. But Renaya Davis showing off the three-point shot tonight. She had a career-high five as part of that 30-point performance. Yeah, her mother was right. She doesn't need to be in the post. <laughs> she needs to be out on the perimeter where she can use her quickness at an, with an advantage. 
Their decision making and consistent effort at both ends of the floor have been really good tonight. Side out for Notre Dame on the foul from Mashingill. Brunel. Maybe that'll help her going into the next contest. Try to find that rhythm again. Makes it an eight-point game. Davis smartly brings it back out. There's Davis capping off the night. An exclamation point for Renaya. Chance to tie her career high with a free throw. It was a great cut under the basket, but Horston had eyes for her. You saw her connect before she left on this cut, delivered the ball right where she needed it to finish the play. She's earned a little flex tonight after the performance. Incredible stuff. She had 33 against Arkansas in SEC play, her career high. She's tied it in South Bend tonight. We'll call a timeout with 24 seconds left. Tennessee back in action with an in-state showdown this week. They'll take on Tennessee State in the state of Tennessee. We got Stetson, Pine Bluff, Air Force, and then that yearly matchup with Texas coming up in December. this one more time the pass and the finish inside and then the reaction look at Davis and Horst and their little guard arms flexing after that, <laughs> <You see> that? <laughs> heard a little shine tonight for sure <laughs> shot clock's off the Tennessee Lady Balls won the first 20 meetings all time Notre Dame won the next six First win for Tennessee over the Irish since 2017. Both teams, I think, learned a lot about themselves. Muffin McGraw knew her team was young, knew they might struggle to score, might have a difficult time rebounding with this big Tennessee team, but without question, a good learning experience for Notre Dame. Got a lot of work to do, but they're young and they'll get there. Great learning experience, but you expect both teams will improve. They will get better game by game. I like the young players on both teams. I like the freshmen. They're learning. Unfortunately, they're lear learning on the big stage yep. in front of a big <laughs> crowd on national television. Well, trial by fire. Just the fourth home loss for Notre Dame in the last 115 home games. First team other than UConn to get a win here in South Bend. We'll have Renaya Davis coming up shortly. For now, Brick, back to you in the studio. When you heard Carolyn Peck and John Brickley talking about the comparison to Candace Parker with the type of performance she had, you had an interesting look on your face. Like, all right, yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah, I know that. That's, that's, that's a lot. <laughs> Impressive stuff, as they mentioned, tying your career high with 33 points. What was working for you and the rest of your young teammates tonight? Well, I was hitting shots tonight, which is big. <laughs> um, but I think we just brought it on the defensive end from the start of the game. That was our plan. So I think we was able to execute on that end. We were talking to coach before the game, and she said, I'm really going to learn a lot about my team coming in to play at Notre Dame. What do you think you showed your coach with not only your individual performance, but what your team was able to do tonight? I mean, we got hard. I think regardless of who we playing, I think that we come out and we play hard. Um, and I think that showed tonight. Your decision making was exactly what your team needed from you taking the shots when they were there, facilitating defensively as well. What is it like when you're out there and able to disrupt the team defensively like you were able to do tonight? It's big. I really think that we can be a great defensive team because we have so much length. We be so athletic. And I mean, we take pride in our defense. So when we don't do it, you know, we kind of we kind of let ourselves down. I think we really can get it done every night on defensive end. You, your team were both impressive tonight. What's the difference between this team and last year's team? 
A lot. Again, like I said, we taking the defensive end serious this year. I think that it was times last year where we didn't. We were inconsistent on that end, and I think Coach Kelly has really emphasized that we have to play that end to even compete in a lot of ball games this year. And then late in the game, you make a little backdoor cut down here on the baseline. <laughs> you catch, you get a, get you a little layup. What's this about out here? The flex? What was this? A drum roll? What were you doing out here after you I, scored that basket? I, I was just turned up. I'm just so proud of my team. That's, I was just turned up. That's it. Hey, yes, under, understandably so, rightfully so. 33 points, impressive performance, nice road win early in the season. We appreciate your time tonight, yes, too. Thank you so much. Renaya Davis, the junior from Jacksonville, Florida. Outstanding performance, part of a 74-63 to Tennessee win over Notre Dame. College football 150 is coming up. So long from South Bend.